Welcome to another NRL video. I'm Glenn Schwartzberg and I'll be your host today for I didn't know I could do that in S-Base substitution variables. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what substitution variables are. So substitution variables are set up by the administrator to simplify maintenance of things like calc scripts and retrieve. It allows you to get rid of repetitive tasks and changing a lot of items. For example, if I wanted to change the scenario I was calculating in multiple scripts. The question I always get is what can I put into a variable? Well, I can put into it a single name like Jan, which is a string value or a member name. I can put it in Jan in quotes and not the intelligent quotes that you see here in my slide, but the standard up and down quotes. PowerPoint tries to be helpful for me and make them intelligent. I could put in a range of members like Jan colon Feb, or I could put in a list of members, Jan comma Feb. Or if I were doing this in MDX or in SQL, I can put them in brackets like this and have a list of members, Jan comma Feb. So the rule of thumb is the syntax would be whatever you would want to use if you had hard coded it in the target. And before a calc script or whatever it is runs, it replaces the variable with the value that the variable is saved to. It then validates the script or whatever it is and then executes. So where are substitution variables used? They're used all over the place. First in load rules, we can use them in SQL. And in SQL, we can use them in multiple places. We can have it as part of the select clause or as the alias in a select clause or as part of the where clause. In the load rule, we can also use it as a column header. So we could have the cur month and replace the current month in the header. We have it in the rule header, so the entire rule is going to load to the cur scenario or the forecast one. And we can have it in the ODBC connection name. And this can be very handy if you're switching environments because many times the ODBC connection name is DBC test and DBC dev, DBC prod in different environments. This way we can switch it without having to go into every load rule and redo it. We can do it in calc scripts and business rules, the most common place. So we can have it in fixed statements or we can have it as part of a calculation. We can have it in planning forms or in smart view retrievals. As a matter of fact, this is how planning does its rolling forecast. It creates a number of substitution variables for the periods in the years to allow you to get the rolling forecast. We can do it in outline formulas. The caveat for outline formulas is they only get updated when the application is started. So what we need to do if we're going to change a variable is we either need to stop and restart the application or at least resave the outline. When we save the outline, it will also save the substitution variables. We can use it in report scripts and we can use it in MDX. For example, if I wanted to do a partial data clear out of an ASO cube, I would write an MDX script to clear the current year and the current period. So here's the fun part. You don't have to just use a substitution variable for a member name. You can use it for anything that you want. So let's take a look at this example where I've got a substitution variable of export path. And here I've got it set to be the path and the name of the file I want to export. I actually have a client that wanted to put their data exports into a different folder every period. Well, here I hard coded the actual file name, but I could have actually just put in the path name and appended in the script the file name. So easily I could change the pathing for all of my scripts at one time. Another use that we had for this is I have a user that has a disaster recovery site where on the disaster recovery site instead of being on the D drive they need to put everything onto the E drive. So again using this methodology 
we can easily change the export path in the files to get it to be on the right place. Well, moving on, how about something like checking out this substitution variable? Clear actual Feb sales cola Texas. It's a whole calculation command. And so what we could do here is we can actually put the entire command into the script just by putting in the values. Again, this could make it almost like we're writing a macro that we can use in multiple places. Or we can do an entire script. So you see I've got my set commands and I've got my clear command. And if I were doing something like setting my calc parallel and I needed to change that, rather than going to 100 calc scripts, I can change it all in once. And then you just call it like this. And it works very easily. So let's go ahead and get into a demo. So I want to prove to you that the substitution variables actually do work. You'll see in my export path, I just have C colon backslash temp. And then in my script down here, I have export path, and then I'm using a forward slash. I could use a backslash as well. Test one, export. And if I look at this, and I'm going to go over to my file system, into my temp directory. you'll see that that test one does not exist. So I'm being honest with you. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this. And it succeeded. And now here's my test one export. I just realized I should have had a file name extension on it, but it worked just perfectly. So the idea with substitution variables is you can use them as a macro language. Anything that you can and want to do with a substitution variable, you can.